Today's adventure begins right here on the Florida into Georgia state line. I will be departing the state of Florida, heading into Georgia momentarily, a couple miles up the road here. Starting off at the Pines, this old desolate bar sitting empty. As the recording of this Thursday, June 13th, 2024, it's a road trip day. It's a back road, small town road trip day. Welcome everyone. Adam the Woo here, South Georgia. Now in full effect, across the state line. The place I was at was just over that way just a bit, but now I am in Folkston, Georgia. And I know that because there is a water tower right there that says so. So I'll be spending time in this area, heading to the middle of Georgia, but starting off here in South Georgia in Folkston. I'm inviting you to join me. I'm excited to be on the road and not in an airplane. It's been a while since I've taken a car and drove through a multitude of states. I'm not gonna be driving through a multitude of states today, but over the next two weeks, I will be. Today it's all about Georgia and tiny communities throughout it. Join me, good to have you here. Shall you? The gateway to the Okie Finoki. Well, uh, alligator up there. I thought it was a lizard, but it is in fact an alligator. Now just up the way a bit, 40, 50 miles up the road, I'm going to be going through a town where I almost bought a house. And then I changed my mind and then I bought a house in Celebration, Florida. But I'm going to be going through Waycross where I was about two seconds away of making an impulsive decision on buying a house there. But I didn't. I ended up in celebration. I wasn't expecting to see this type of door on the end of this wall of windows here. Oh yeah. Train rolling through. Look at this old building. I'm on the corner of First Street and Main Street. That's right down the middle of Main Street, USA. Georgia, USA. This must be the old bank building. It's all boarded up though on the front of the front of it. The street sign even has a train on it. It's a good old Americana. Never go wrong with that. Nice rocking chairs here. Those are nice and solid rocking chairs too. There's the post office over there here in Folkston. Love a good train. Soothing sounds of the railroad. Oh, there's even some train watchers over there. Look at that. Train watching station. What the heck? That's awesome. That's pretty dang cool. Like a group of people sitting on their rocking chairs over there, watching the train go by. I like that. Small town, Georgia life. It is hot out here. That's a great image right there. Even a nice little Coca-Cola sign right over here, old school Coca-Cola sign. Birds are even chirping. Does it get much better than that? 
Nice old ghost sign there, South Georgia Timber Company. The Whistlin' Dixie Cafe. Right up here, look at this, the Whistlin' Dixie Cafe. Go back the other way, the opposite way that I'm heading is the Wildlife Refuge. It says seven and a half miles there, it says 10 miles. On this side, the Okefenokee Swamp, meaning the land of the trembling earth. Hunting and fishing grounds, tribes of Indians, 250 dragoons. Drove out to the, land, the last of these, the Seminoles in 1873, Indian Rebellion, Southern Georgia. 37, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service acquired most of the 400,000 acres. Hunting is prohibited. There is some fishing allowed though. Some fishing is allowed. Caddy corner of the street is this kind of cute little Hopkins Gowan Oil Company building and uh, an old gas pump or an oil pump here with the U.S. flag. Ethanol-free gas. I just carrying along the road here. A couple miles outskirts of the town I was just in. This yard has, well this item is for sale for $1,200. A little classic car. But look at this little weird futuristic looking thing here in the middle. It's really not futuristic looking, but it just looks like something out of like a sci-fi movie. I don't know what better way to describe it, but you got some Volkswagen bugs over there. You got a, looks like a hot pepper, chili pepper on the side. Ooh, this might have even been an old gas station because there you can see where the gas pumps used to be on that concrete slab right there. This is right here on Highway 1 and Highway 23. You can refer to it either way. I see the sign off in the distance. I'm going north on Highway 1 or Highway 23. This is looking southward now. Also see a RC Cola sign. This is called the House of Rust. Check this out. Pretty cool. Classic cars and parts. McDaniel's House of Rust, that sign says, with the arrow pointing over there. Look at this car. It has, like a, it has a couple little back fins on it. This gray one. See the fins there, and then that license plate says here comes old Emma classic car alert cars alert here at the house here's Mater at the house of rust directly across the road not on the same property as the house of rust are some classic cars, probably somehow affiliated with the House of Rust. These items. And this bus. Old Sharon Baptist Church bus. Looks like something from out of End of the Wild as the Jesus saves across the back. 
It's amazing what you can find off the side of a road. Here it is, downtown Waycross, Georgia. What could have been my little hometown. You know how a lot of times I'll walk around downtown St. Cloud, uh, St. Celebration, I almost said St. Cloud, downtown Celebration, Lake Reinhard. I could have done a lot of walk and talks right down this very road. Pretty wild to think about, right? Little Coca-Cola factory here, or maybe just an office. Way across Georgia. More rocking chairs. Right along the train tracks. There's the Waycross water tower. Yeah, it was really, I had pretty much decided that I was gonna live here and then I started driving home and then it hit me. What am I doing? Why do I wanna be four hours from my parents, four hours from central Florida? Even though it is a cute little town and the house was a really good deal. Definitely would not have been the best decision I made, ever made, but it is a cute place. There's definitely been a handful of places that I have thought about moving to. Waycross, Georgia was one. Pigeon Forge, Tennessee was one. Marceline, Missouri, I looked at a couple houses there. But this was the one that made me decide that it was the correct place to get, or the correct decision to get a spot in Celebration, Florida. Because once I started driving back, I was talking to the realtor, she looked at a house. I was like, this is awesome. I said, I want it, I'll be in touch. And then driving home, I realized, what the heck? I need to be in Central Florida. And obviously, Southern California was always on my mind too, but. Anyway, I just wanted to pass by here, show some of the town. This used to be a, this used to be a gas station at one point also. All right, moving on. As I'm cruising along the road, I'll see something. I have to turn around real quick to See what it's all about. This is Johnson's Corner. It used to be a deli. They had beer, lottery tickets, cigarettes, but does not look like it is a fuel station anymore. Which is right over there on the corner, on Johnson's Corner. Moving on. Next little town over is called Alma. This was fascinating, so I had to pull over and check this out. It's an old video store called Video Palace. Right there. They also had prepaid cell phones, or prepaid cell phone minutes. Right there, there's a little walk-up window. And at first I thought maybe there were some of the movie posters in here, but really it's just the ceiling falling out. Definitely seen better days. Pay as you go. Oh, check it out. There's even a place to eat right in there. The table. An old TV. Not a flat screen, still mounted up there. Probably where they were playing, had a VCR probably connected to it. Playing movies. There is no payphone here anymore, but the sign's still there. It's a nice little relic of the past. I guess the phone used to be maybe right there. It's gone now though. All right, most unusual building, most unusual bank, Pineland Bank Award goes to this place. That is a bank, look at that building. Looks like it's just a drive up like an ATM. I don't even know if it's an actual indoor bank, but one of the workers popped out the door and said, oh, there's some information here on this little placard. So here it is, former Alma Exchange Bank. 
constructed this drive through facility in the mid-1960s. It was heavily influenced and known as Googie architecture. Futuristic architecture style influenced by car culture, jet aircraft, and the space age. I guess it was remodeled back in the early, early 2020. Oh, there is a little nod to the 1964 World's Fair and the unique vision of that. There's a fountain behind me. Right here at the base. Pretty neat. So there is an inside portion of the bank. That's where the worker was. She popped out and said, oh, check out the plaque. So yeah, people working inside there. How neat. Okay, this is interesting. The county this is in is Bacon County. And it's also the coffee district. <laughs> Two amazing things. Bacon and coffee. Who doesn't? Oh man, I'm sure some people don't like bacon, some people don't like coffee, but yeah. It is in fact Bacon County and the Coffee District. Look at that. <laughs> that reminds me, I need some coffee. Here's the Bacon County Sheriff Van Transport Van, and there is the Bacon County Courthouse and the City Hall. All right, their post office kinda is amazing also. Zip code 315. One zero. This is their post office here at Alma. Nice. Let's roll through town. Looks like there's an old theater up here. There was a salon. And the Bacon Theater. <laughs> Some cool architecture in this town. Gotta be honest, definitely some unique looking buildings. The municipal building there. Drove about another half hour over to Broxton. That's the Broxton Water Tower in God We Trust. That's the U.S. Post Office here in town. Pulled over and parked in their downtown area. Evidently used to be a building right here that was torn down. You can see the bottom portion of it here. Either that or a grown over parking lot, but it looks like the base of a building. There was a drive through right here. This is kind of interesting, this drive through This building is no longer a food establishment. It is a church building now. But there used to be a drive through The sign's still here. You see the cross where the drive through used to be. Vehicles can't pull through here anymore. And it's now the Heritage Baptist Church. There's their worship time. So then up here is a sign. There's a sailboat on it logging truck pulled over to the light with the lot hardware right there. There's a better view of that sign where the sun's not shadowing it out. There's also Heritage Baptist Church over there so evidently they got both sides of the street. Oh, another video store. Ooh, maybe there's something in there I could peek in the window and find. Or if there's any relics of the VHS world. Two video stores in one day. Of course, nothing inside the windows that I've seen, but this was probably a little bit better than the other one because this one, Broxton Video, usually this means that something follows it up. But the four dots there, or the four periods. But this one still has the after hours video return That is 
freaking awesome. Now the weather has rusted that out and that will not open, but that is great. Video store shopper, that was where you could order these from back in the day. Ah, the 80s, the VHS generation. The best times. This is looking inside the dirty window here. You can see there's an open door back there, but this place is not structurally sound. And don't see any VHS relics in there. It looks like it was used for storage or maybe another store after it was the video store, but the roof is caving in. There's the water tower up there I was just showing. Here's the lot hardware. A little car wash across the street called Hope's Car Wash. Right there. Got a mural right here. Welcome to Broxton. Established 1904. It's like the Broxton Lady Bucks were the 1990 1A state basketball champs. You can also get snapper mowers, tillers, and tractors right here in this building. And over there, it looks like to be some classic cars tucked away underneath that awning. A few of them. Right, I'm noticing on the side of this building, 102 right here, you got some mud dauber nests up there. But there are interesting items in there got some old signage an old gas station sign an old Johnson seahorse motor sign Let's get the old store in here pretty cool this corner building on the corner of Railroad Ave chicken stand over here got some Pepsi machines out front and a little grocery store over on this side yeah it doesn't get any more cute and quaint than this Smith's grocery pizza wings coffee peanuts lotto auto movie snacks it even says movies up on the top of their sign too this might have been like an old cigarette ad there's a drive through here for the Country Kitchen. Look at this old oh, logging truck going by. Look at this old satellite up here. Well, satellite. No, it's not a satellite. It would be a radio antenna. TV antenna, that's what I'm looking that's the word I'm looking for. Wonder how many channels you can get with that nowadays. On the outskirts of town, gotta love this. It's an Andy Griffith show mural over here. Prominently featuring Don Knotts. You got Andy and Opie over here too, walking to the fishing pole. You got those bugged out eyes. Playing Barney Fife, Deputy Barney Fife. Sheriff Andy Taylor. Played by Mr. Andy Griffith. Opie, of course, played by Ron Howard. I don't know if there's a correlation on why this is here, but it is, and I like it. There's also a lot of gnats around me. They're not mosquitoes, they're just gnats. I think they might be biting gnats, so they're a little annoying. Like all around this fence line. Ugh. Get out of here, gnats. That's pretty dang cool. Dylan Ross. That's who uh, painted, I can see the name right up there. Right here on the side of this little farmhouse. It's a really massive plant here in the driveway too and it's across the street from the Broxton Church of God which is right over there. I'm now pulling through Jacksonville, Georgia. Very tiny town. 
Here's their fire and rescue building. There's their water tower. An ambulance. Jacksonville, Georgia. Entering another small community here. I'm stuck behind that farm vehicle for a few miles. Just enjoying the nice slow drive. This is Pond Town. Judging by the signs I see on some of the businesses. At least the ones that are open. Here's a variety store here that's closed. There's something here evidently burned down. Cute little building. That's the Pond Town Market right there. The thermometer. Okay, it no longer has the thermometer piece on it, but check out this relic here, a little antique Sprite thermometer. The water tower. Here in Pond Town. Trash can inside of a door. It's odd. And here's the market, which I do not believe is open anymore. Pond Town Market. Drugstore has a little mailbox out front. I believe they're still open for business, but at this time of the day, they're closed. Pharmacy, prescriptions. Rhine Drugstore. Okay, the name of the town is Rhine. I don't know where, I guess maybe the nickname is Pond Town. it over to Eastman. And I am happy to say that I am standing beside, soon to be standing in front of, I'm gonna walk over there, the very first Stuckies. Anyone that travels the open road across America, visiting roadside attractions, traveling from point A to point B. If you've been doing it for several years or more, you probably have heard of Stuckies. They're starting to make a comeback. But back 20, 30 years ago, they were everywhere. And the first one is right here. Pretty cool. In 1937, W.S. and Ethel Stuckey opened the first pecan shop at this location. Today, a Stuckey's can be found in nearly every state in the Union and has become an important part of their lives. Those who travel the highways of this great country. This spot has been dedicated to the memory of the first step forward by Mr. and Mrs. Stuckey and the many employees that have been part of their heritage. Yep, that is definitely... Looks like a Stuckey's. Kind of stinks that it's not open. Looks like it's still in pretty good shape. It could could be a current Stuckey's, but it's not. It's now just used for some storage. I mean, a furniture store of some sort. Oh, it's a all things flooring and tile. I can see the sign through there where the planner was right here. Good old Stuckies. Started here. Never knew that. Yeah, for a long time, every time you found an old Stuckies, there was usually 
I burn out or burn down, especially on big interstates. But in the last four or five years, they've really made a resurgence, and now you're starting to see a lot of new Stuckies popping up, which I'm happy about. Downtown Eastman, a place called the Bug House, a pest control place. Pentecostal Church, delivery area of that. Blinking traffic light. Number eight Eastman Fire Department truck. It's like a kind of an antique fire truck right there. Engine number eight. Oh, nice. It's a mile or two away from where the original Stuckey's is. And they painted a mural here on the side of the wall downtown by Christopher Johnson in 2022. Right over there, he signed his name. And there it is, right there, the first Stuckies I was just at. The classic cars in front. Let me zoom in on this. Put the gas pumps out front. Architecture above the gas pumps, the fuel pumps. The first pecan shop, Stuckies. Those pecan logs. That's where they, that's what made them famous. The original pecan log. Been cruising along for about another half hour. And I had to do a quick little U-turn, pull back over here because I found something really freaking awesome. Right over here off to the side. Here. Look at this beautiful thing. It's an old store with a relic of soda pop past. A Pepsi freaking machine in front of this abandoned building. No spray paint, no graffiti. Right here along the main road. Perfectly decayed. Stuck in stuck back in time. The Pepsi machine really adds to it. This is awesome. Pull up just so I can get the side of the building too. That is aw that is great. There's even an old neon sign in here that's obviously not working. Also look at the the light part up here. Attached to the awning. But then look at this. Let's say say bud. It says say something. The old neon behind the window there. All right, stopped here, got a coffee, got to fuel up $3.34 a gallon. But the problem is I cannot get this open. This is a Ford Escape 2020. This will not open and there is no there is no switch by the door that you can flip anymore because 2020 to current day, all you have to do is just tap it. And I've tried, I looked a bunch of stuff up online. They say you could put like a credit card in there and try to pry it open. Nothing's working, so. I've got about 100 miles till empty, so I'm gonna drive a little bit more and then maybe try to find a place that has a screwdriver. And worst comes to worst, I'll have to just pop this off, but it's not cooperating. Tapped it. I've hit it hard. Been messing with this for, for quite a while. But I definitely gonna have to have this open to put gas in it. Alright, I think there might be a solution. So I'm gonna pull over to another gas station. See if it works. There might be a workaround. Over at another Circle K. Price of gas, $3.15 a gallon here. So first Circle K, I couldn't get it open. Took me about 20 minutes. I looked a bunch of stuff up online. Again, in the door, there is no switch. Prior to 2020, you just push something next to the seat. It would pop this open. A buddy of mine who is a mechanic, I got a hold of him. He said, check in the trunk, see if there's a switch. There isn't. Kept driving a little bit. He alerted me that maybe by the tire, there would be something. So I looked under here. 
And I know, like, I am definitely not an expert on cars, but I just want to put this out there in case anybody has this issue with this vehicle and this does not open. And if you try a credit card to try to pry it open, if that does not work, see, now it's open. So when it's closed like that, it's supposed to open, but it's definitely an issue. So what I did was, thanks to my buddy, is this pulls down like this, clamps up on there, and then you pull this and magically that opens. Now afterwards, I'm gonna have to put this back up like this, clamp this on, hide it right there, but I'm gonna have to probably do this my whole road trip. But man, I was pretty stressed that I wasn't gonna be able to fill it up. So for future reference, anyone that's wondering, if, it's, if there's not a switch in the trunk, check above the tire on this particular model. Again, this is a, this is a Ford Escape Titanium 2020. Whew. At least the self-pumping gas nozzle works. I almost, if, if I didn't know about the switch, if I had pried that open, done the whole credit card trick, which didn't work, I would have, uh, that's gotta be more than $6 in gas. Or maybe not. Self-pumping gas nozzle does not work. I guess I gotta hold it. He just likes to hold it. I think this gas pump is not working right either. Okay, there it goes. Or not. What the heck is going on with me fueling up today? Or tonight? Anyway, I got it open.